I'm R. Paul Allen, your host covering the first Hobie Cat 16 World Championships here in Hawaii, where 84 teams from all over the world will compete for the world title. I'm standing at the foot of the famous Diamond Head Crater overlooking the warm and windy waters off Waikiki Beach, one of the most challenging sailing areas in all of the world, in the same waters where centuries ago the original catamarans were sailed by Polynesians island hopping the Pacific. Down at the Outrigger Canoe Club Racing Headquarters are 50 identical 16-foot catamarans provided for the competitors by the International Hobie Class okay. Association. Right. The hottest cat sailors from 18 nations trained and competed in their countries for the past year just to win the right to be here. They are given just a few moments to inspect these new boats before six days of tough racing begin. Special races during the first two days allowed an additional 77 teams from around the world the chance to qualify for 33 open slots in the World Championships. It's out to the start. Have all the boats scheduled to race in this race left the beach and over? An important factor in getting a good start is timing. The crews synchronize their watches with flags hoisted on the start boat. A white flag is raised 10 minutes before the start. It is lowered exactly 5 minutes and 30 seconds before the start. Five. The course to be sailed is posted, and skippers verify it on their course charts. Blue. Then a blue flag goes up 5 minutes before the start. The chart the skippers use looks like this. The racing headquarters of the outrigger is here, close to Waikiki and Honolulu and Diamond Head. The race can be up to 10 miles long and is laid in the form of a triangle marked by buoys which the boats must sail around in an order posted by the start boat. Yeah, the wind is slowly shifting to the left. Yeah. A, B, L, A, B. Okay, so it's a triangle. Triangle. And then it's a, um, then it's a windward lure and finish. Okay. I don't know, I think the middle might be the way to go. I think it's coming in. The wind's picking up a little bit more and more all the time. Yeah. I'm going to make a run pass to the uh, committee boat, and we'll, uh, I'll get another time on the watch. Okay, I want to check the line, too, at the same okay. time. Good starting tactics demands quick thinking and precise teamwork. Blue flag is down. 30 seconds to go. Boats begin jockeying for the best yeah. position on the line, but just behind it when the red start flag goes up. It's a wild, exciting free-for-all, yelling special rules like this one at a barging boat. Barging is like someone butting in line at the local supermarket. You're barging! We're forced down on by 27. The red flag is up. It's the start of six days of world championship racing. A low pressure system called Kona weather hovered over the qualifying series, bringing onshore winds, but not for long. The first day of racing, the Hawaii trade winds returned, funneling down Manoa Valley, between and over the tall Waikiki hotels, blasting down and across the water like a breaking wave. The speed of the cats was incredible, pushing 25 knots.
test of endurance between man and the elements. United States champion Jerry King and Pat Love handled the conditions with expert form. There was two boats that slipped right in the same spot. You know, we're watching mm -hmm. up there. Yeah, we just backed way up on the boat and let the sails all the way out. Yeah. Well, you guys didn't have as much weight as him either. Huh? Oh no! Did you see yeah. those big guys from Australia? Yeah. The puff had come and they just truck. No, I thought we thought you guys were doing so good because you don't have all that weight. How far? You're really far back. Everything. He works the main sheet. That's why. Is that right? Most oh, of those guys yeah. seem to. Yeah, they seem to have their. As low as we could get. Yeah. And he kept saying, he kept saying, hang on, Jerry, hang on. <laughs> I'd go over, glug, glug, glug. Come on, Jerry, stay on here. Come on, boy. <laughs> He's working. That was a great race. With four races a day, it's a sure thing that one of the starts would send the boats on a course that would take them around the famous Diamond Head buoy. This meant that the reaching leg would be a wild two-mile sprint at top speed with your heart in your mouth and the thought of rounding that buoy tickling your spine. The Diamond Head buoy is cheered as well as dreaded by Transpac yachtsmen who race over 2,000 miles to finish at this buoy, sometimes with a disastrous knockdown or dismasting in the tricky winds that lurk there. Winds that roll down and around Diamond Head, splashing here and there unsuspectingly. Rounding the Diamond Head buoy, was like trying to make a left turn in the middle of the Hollywood freeway. With these strange winds, one minute you'd be in fourth place, the next in first, and not really know why. The gusty winds off Waikiki and Diamond Head provided a fast ride, or a swim. With the hull coming up and down with the gusts, the crew must move quickly to avoid becoming one of the flying Wallendas. Hawaiian champion Herb Andresen lost first place in one race doing just that. The boat and us. And Alvin, right out, and it flipped us over. Well, it was it was the mother uh, mother nature that did us a bad deal. And you lost the lead to uh, King, huh? I lost the lead to King, and I I gained some of it back. I got a fifth. So I'm not I'm not discouraged because it's uh, I think consistency is is what what counts. Consistent capsizes in the same race can cause your crew to revolt and swim in. Having the crew out in the trapeze can usually prevent you from losing the boat in a capsize. Unless the wind suddenly quits, then you lose your crew. The best description of this world championship was versed by U.S. skipper Jeff Canepa. I've never sailed so fast for so many days in my whole life. Racing was tough, but so was keeping track of how each skipper finished and which team would sail which boat in the next race. In major sporting events, even the Olympics, competitors have the advantage of using their own personal equipment. But not here. After each race, in round-robin fashion, 42 skippers and their crews relax briefly while the other 42 grab their assigned boat for the next race. As it hits the beach, make quick adjustments, and head back out to start. They had only one half hour between races. They had to hurry. back out for another race. Maybe it would be light airs this time. Anything under 20 knots would do for some. Contrary to the slam bang action of windy racing, light airs demands quiet, deliberate movements, handling the boat like it was a delicate piece of crystal. 
light or heavy conditions, the racing was close, and close in many ways. These two are close friends. In this high caliber competition, the closest and most critical part of the race is usually at the start and while rounding the marks. There wasn't much room at either one. There's a mark in there somewhere. Close can also mean just keeping your hulls in front of his. Close can mean keeping your hulls out of his. See this guy on starboard, Richard? Richard, down. <laughs> Got a yell, please. Let us know. These boats are all racing by a uniform set of international rules, which governs the decisions of each skipper during close combat racing. This was a near miss on two counts. Winners of each race were given three quarters of a point, two points for second, three points for third, and so on. At the end of the final race, the skipper with the lowest score and the best finishes would be world champion. Yeah. There were many moments of glory, especially among the heavy wind specialists from Australia, Puerto Rico, Hawaii, and Tahiti. Hawaii was chosen for the world championship because it's a great place to sail. It's also a great place to have fun, and it didn't take the sailors long to get into the swing of things. There are two ways to be a tourist, super high class, or the low, low budget, do your own touring service. For some, Hawaii is just fun in the sun, and studying the different styles of bikinis. There was the topless style, and the new bottomless style. Hawaii is mainly a land of fun on the water, on all types of exotic craft. While enjoying Hawaii, a good tourist always wears the latest in Hawaiian sportswear. Jeff Kanepa wears the first floating hula skirt and life jacket. The extreme wind conditions created a high demand for spare parts. Meet Jeff Kanepa, 22-year-old California business law student, three-time catamaran sailing champion, international bon vivant, and used car salesman. I said I know the problem. Your pocket is too far back. You can't. Tu parles de quoi? Qu'est-ce que tu veux? Je suis en train de régler le bateau, c'est tout. It's come from a sale by an excellent sailor, and I just happened to pick it up from him. 75. 75 what? Have you got it's a main sheet, sheet block. A main sheet block I do have. Main sheet block right here, right here. Okay. I, ha I have what you need. You need some sail tails. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Tilda! Ça? Aïe, aïe, aïe! Tout ça? Do you speak English? You speak uh, English? I speak a little English, you yeah. Speak, that's great. Yeah. That, that's how I speak English. You speak oh, the 40 cents. American money? Yeah. 75. 40. Oh, they're 40 in Australia. 55. 85 total. 85 total tax free. Ah, oh, but we were at 55, and now you got and 55 and 15 cents for the uh, for the telltale. Let me make the deal. No, I need all that. Back to, you need all this. All of it. I'll it's buy yours. it all. It's and yours. yours. What about this? It's, the suit it's is yours. yours. Okay, it's yours. give it to me right there now, because I'm in a hurry. It, it's all yours. Yeah, I'm in a hurry. Uh, Take every, uh, do you have some money? Hey, Rick. Where is that guy? He didn't give me the right change. <laughs> that son of a... After six days and 18 grueling races, it was down to the final race. The tourists on the Beach Cats had grandstand seats waiting for the final race that would decide the Hobie Cat 16 World Championships. It was tense on the beach as the 42 finalists made last minute preparations. There are three teams closest to winning the world title. Dean Froome and John Driscoll from Hawaii, 
Richard Lufeck and Jeff Kanepa from California, Birthday. Harold Birthday. Hutchings and Birthday. Howard Lynn from Hawaii. I have 10 minutes to get off the beach. Everybody here? Dean Froome, you have a good chance to win. How do you feel? Well, the winds are looking good. All I need is a third, so I feel good. Okay, are you, uh, have any special tactics that you're going to use on this race? Cover Kanepa. Other than that, just uh, try and get a first. Don't do worse than third. Jeff Kanepa, Richard Lufeck, what are you going to do out there? We decided there's four or five people that are up for it, and it's not uh, something that we can pick a boat and, and make a, a tactical move or stay on top of them throughout the race. Um, we've got them just sail every race uh, as we've been doing, and, and hope that we... Uh, We've just, we can't cover one particular person. I think we're just going to have to go for the win. You have to go for consistency, it looks yeah. like to if, me. If there was just one person we, we had to follow around the course and beat, that's a different story. But if we follow one person, then there's three or four other people who could move ahead of us very, very easily. Harold Hutchings, what is your strategy going to be in this final race? Well, our only possibility of winning is to get first. So we have to uh, you know, sell our very best race, get a good start, play the right shifts, I guess, and get a first place. Teams head out for the last race, for the last chance at a moment's glory. start and clear air, starting where they started all week as they felt the wind filled in first from this side of the course. Right with Lufeck and just down the line is Harold Hutchings with a red sail number 07. Down toward the lured end with a good but conservative start is Dean Froome, the orange sail number 24 in the center screen, choosing not to mix it up with Lufeck at the start. Froome can't afford to have a foul situation in this last race. He just wants a clear air start that will give him a chance to stay near Lufeck and still sail a good race. Remember, all Froome needs is a third to win the world title. If Lufek wins and Froome finishes fourth, Lufek will be the world champion. It is that close between these two. No sailboat can sail directly into the wind, so they tack back and forth at about 45 degrees into the wind, like this to the first mark. David Bray from Australia rounds in first place, followed by Hutchings in second. Richard Lufeck in the gold boat number 54 jives around the mark in fifth position, heading downwind this time to the leeward mark. Where's Froome? Froome is buried in 19th position, surrounded by a pack of boats. He was too far down the line at the start, unable to stay in the same wind as Lufeck. Rounding the leeward mark, Froome is still in 19th. And with every ounce of Driscoll's 190 pounds out on the trapeze, they race to weather again. Back at the weather mark, it's Hutchings. Hutchings and Lynn of Hawaii have taken over the lead from Australian David Bray. Hutchings going for that long shot, knowing that if he wins this race, he can possibly win the world title. But Lufeck is pressing hard. Lufeck has passed two boats on the downwind leg and taken over third place, trailed closely by the California team of Russell Eddington and Jim Black. The winds have died off suddenly, like they have done all week long, like someone playing with a light switch. Violent 35 knot gusts, then nothing. Froome, with brilliant upwind sailing tactics, has passed nine boats and jibes around the weather mark now in 10th position. Lufeck is going to pass Hutchings. Lufeck takes over the lead from Hutchings and really steps on the gas. The wind is on again. An unbelievable 35 knot gust drives Lufeck further into the lead. If he holds this lead and Froome stays in 10th, Lufeck will be the world champion. But this was Froome and Driscoll's weather, and it isn't switching off. Two cats are suddenly blasted over like toy boats, and Froome takes off. Some say the winds were caused by the magical Hawaiian tea leaves that Froome tied to his boom before the race. Perhaps it was the Hawaiian minahunis. Whatever it is, the wind is on, Froome is on, powering like a racehorse going down to the water. Boats are going over left and right, but he and Driscoll are just going fast, like they've done all week, winning three of the heavy wind races. 
After a couple of wild reaches at over 25 miles an hour, Froome has moved into fifth place just in front of Danny Gale from Lahaina Maui. And he's closing fast on Hutchings and Lufak. But fifth still isn't good enough. John Driscoll and Dean Froome using their combined weight of 320 pounds out on the wire for maximum speed. These two have sailed together all year long, practicing in the ocean off Waikiki, developing special techniques for handling the boat in these gusty conditions. Froome has caught Hutchings at the last mark before the finish. What an exciting race. If Froome can now hold on to third, he has won the world championships. But Hutchings is pinching up, trying to keep Froome from passing. Froome drives off to Lourdes. It looks like Froome is going to try and pass Hutchings in this last leg. Froome never lets up. He wants second place. Lupac and Kanepa have a tremendous lead in this race, but on the scoreboard, that's not good enough. Froome and Driscoll, with remarkable racing, have sailed from a buried in the pack, 19th to 10th to 5th, then to second place. And they've done it! They've done it! The first Hobie Cat 16 world champion. Dean Froome and John Driscoll from Kailu, Hawaii, defeating 84 international teams in this wind-battered, high-speed World Series of catamaran racing.